Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Staying Forever Strong. I'm here with a friend of mine, Cole Anthony of Big Brother 21, Big Brother 22 All Stars, and she has um, a podcast, Hello Friends Podcast. I'm excited to talk to her and get to talk to her more about just how she stays strong. Hey Nicole, how are you? Hey Alexa, how are you? Good, good. Um, Which, by the way, I'd be very careful saying your name. I lowered <laughs> all the technology in my house <laughs> before I got on. I'm like, Alexa, volume one. <laughs> Don't be answering me. <laughs> it's been so funny because, like, I um, we have a couple. We always mute them. Smart. Because <laughs> yeah. before this, it was on volume 10. And I'm like, oh, good thing I remembered. Otherwise, she'd be answering every question. <laughs> So funny. I know. It's like, it's really nice actually, because um, I used to never have my name anywhere, like on key names, like in the, in like airports or whatever. Now it's everywhere. That's actually interesting. I was just talking to somebody about that. And I said, isn't it weird that Alexa is the name of technology when I feel like I grew up with so many Alexas? And the person I was talking to was like, no, I feel like you never see the name Alexa. And that's why they picked it. And I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah, now you do. Like, no, most people still call me Alexis, Alex, Alexia. They add to my name. <laughs> they don't even <laughs> To make it different. It's when people start saying Echo. That's when you have to worry. <laughs> right? <laughs> or Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> Is it Echo also? Yeah, I think it, you could make it one of the three, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I, don't, I always get confused because I, I think Google's like Echo and I don't know. Yeah, Google, I think, is... Just what Google. do you say? Just Google? I think so. Oh. I think I should get some residuals since I had the name yeah. first. Agreed. Agreed. Oh, they stole it from you. I agree. <laughs> um, if you're watching, I will take some residuals now. Thank you very much. <laughs> so how have you been? How's life? Um, I have been all right. Um, Getting out of the Big Brother 22 All-Star House was a very different road for me. Um, I would say more difficult than last season, but I would say it was more difficult because of last season and because I already went through the whole process once before, less than a year ago, with COVID <laughs> smashed into the middle. Um, so, like, I have, I have good days. I have bad days. I literally just... Um, not last night, the night before, and I even tweeted out about it. I was having a really rough night, just stuck in my own head, anxious, a mess. Um, and sometimes I don't even know why. It just kind of like hits me yeah. and you start panicking about the most random things like, oh my gosh, I need a car. And when I get a car, oh, do I move out? Do I move out first or do I get the car first? Oh wait, oh my gosh, I never went to the bank. And it just all really starts like cycling and then I start with like the oh my gosh I'm the worst I should have gotten that done today oh I don't get anything done and it just like it's vicious so that was like two nights ago and then yesterday woke up kind of like cried it out got myself past it and now I'm back to like being okay so it's weird how it's just like the highs and lows of working through everything which I think obviously everybody goes through but um big brother kind of compounded that yeah like it probably is like part PTSD without realizing it and like, I know, I couldn't imagine, like, you literally were just in Big Brother quarantine, then the Big Brother world, you were there, and you were there till finale night, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. You have that, you're home for however many months, and then all of a sudden, now we have this huge lockdown. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, I was convinced, like, oh, okay, this is what I'm used to. I was locked in a house for 100 days then locked in my house for like 150 days, <laughs> then, you know, I'm going to go in the big brother house. Like I'm prepared for this. And like you said, it was a weird uh, PTSD that I didn't realize I had. Yeah. So when I was in the big brother 22 house, I literally woke up day two and was like, Oh my gosh, I can't do this. There's no way I can do this for a hundred days. Like <laughs> I really thought it was going to strengthen me, but I realized in that moment, like I I'm done. Like I already did this for so long. Like I need to be free. <laughs> yeah. Because then a lot of them, like, just really went from the COVID lockdown into Big Brother, mm -hmm. not absolutely Big Brother, COVID, Big Brother. So that's crazy. And even, even um, David, who I shared the season with last season, he had left earlier in the season. So, yes, he has a similar experience, but uh, two months shorter. Yeah. Yeah. So he at least had that little. And it wasn't like he was in jury, so he was mm -hmm. still locked down. 
Absolutely. Yeah. It's crazy. It's just, it's like almost not, none of it is like sane. If you really think about it. Oh, it's, it's absolutely not. You know, it's something that um, Danny always said in the house. She would say to us, you know, we're gluttons for punishment. We are insane. Why, why are we here? We've all played at least once before. We know the days that you're crying. We know the days that you're such an anxious mess. We know the days that you just want to self evict. And yet we all came back. <laughs> so we're yep. all gluttons for it because we love the game. We respect the game. And it's kind of like childbirth when you're out of it. You're like, no, oh, that's really not that bad. And then when you're back in it, you're like, what? I say yes. <laughs> and especially the ones that already won too. Like, you at least got to that point. Like now you're going to do it to yourself again. <laughs> yeah. And I'd almost be afraid. And this is like more my hang up in OCD. I'd be more afraid. I had already won it. What if I don't win it this time? Did I ruin my, like, oh, she's a winner. Which I guess, I guess I can't say that because last year I did make it to finale night. I did win AFP. Do I feel like I ruined that? I really don't. Because I feel like that's a standalone season. It's its own thing. And, you know, this is a different part of my journey. I honestly think pretty much any part for this season, because it is all stars. So everyone is repeating. I feel like for the most part, like you're already a winner just being on it. Oh, I like that. Thank you. <laughs> of course. No, I just, I do because it's like, if you think about it, like you're on with these like incredible players, like you're all mm -hmm. picked for a reason. Yeah. Whether it be, like comp beast or social game or right. like a fan favorite it far at some point yep but I could see like where you're thinking too it's like but then I was just on and I was just in this high and now it's like I come out before jury or whenever it's like so it's hard it's that was one of the most difficult things when I initially got out of the house was you know knowing I had this quote-unquote title of like okay everybody's looking up to you, not everybody, but you know what I mean, everybody's looking up to you, and loves you, and you're one of the favorites, and then to leave week two, I felt like I let a lot of people down, um, by not trusting my allies, I felt like I, I let a lot of people down, you know, the people that were like, oh, she's so loyal, she's so this, she's so that, then I got the other end of the spectrum of, why didn't you trust people, we thought you were so trusting, so it That's was a very, thing to yeah, be yeah, yeah, it definitely flipped everything on its ear. So when I got off the season, the season, I was very like, wow, I let a lot of people down. I let my fans down, my friends, my family, my podcast listeners, my show watchers. And I just felt all that weight of, you know, these people were expecting me to get far and I screwed up. And here I am, gosh, how many weeks later? And I finally, probably like a week ago, two weeks ago, like, you know, got past that and accepted like no like that I didn't let anybody down like I went in there for me I didn't let myself down like I feel okay so it's a matter of moving forward you went in for you you didn't go for anyone else so the fact that you didn't let yourself down which you shouldn't anyway I think it shows that you didn't let anyone down because you're the one that matters but I was thinking too it's like how like when you go and like you were like you said you're the trusting the loyal but mm -hmm you obviously didn't get all the way, unfortunately, last time. So it's like, but you never know, like, people can still turn on you. It's not, yeah. you don't want to be that one either that's the naive, loyal, and then you get messed or turned upside down because of it. That's a valid point. You know, my being so loyal to Cliff is very different to All-Star Season where people have played one, two, three times before, mm -hmm. and I don't know, are they putting their game upside down? Are they usually very trusting and now they're not are they very loyal but this season they're not going to be is this person pretending to be nice but they're actually ruthless and that already factors into a big brother season but now with returning players who have to like kind of like up the ante on their game right you know you start to question things more yeah I didn't even realize it was a week two that you left I thought it was yeah. like later than that no it was week two. it just all goes like so like into each other because so many days I like, they've been in there like 70 something days and I'm like I feel like they've been in there for like hundreds of days I don't know I feel like it was just they just got on because it like, doesn't feel like it's that long ago but I guess it was August right I think because yeah, so yeah August I think because a lot of people were repetitively in power so it seems shorter like Cody yeah. was in power a lot Memphis was in power a lot that alliance was in power a lot so you kind of can't distinguish the weeks whereas 
if like I had won HOH, you'd be like, oh my God. And it like breaks up the season because different yeah. sides had power. I think when one side has the power and they bulldoze, it just kind of like, oh, no, like one big- our finale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Um, so how, how was it coming out this time? Like when, cause last time you didn't come out until, um, fin- finale night. So yeah. you were in the whole time and then this time you came even out before for mm-hmm. jury. How was that like transition? And then also with COVID on top of that. Oh my, it was, you know, last season, obviously, like, like you said, I got out post like finale everything was wrapped up with a little bow and I was moving forward so I didn't watch my season I didn't want to see the last hundred days that I just lived I just wanted to move forward which yeah yeah, which I thought was like me rocking and rolling I thought I was good I thought like yeah I lived it I don't need to process it everything is good with the world and then going into this season even before I entered the house I started to realize like oh, maybe I should watch my season. Now nah, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't need to, I'm fine. Which I then realized was just my anxiety avoiding things because when I entered the house this time, a lot hit me like a brick wall that I didn't process from last time. Like being in the house with 15 people again triggered a lot from being in the house last season with 15 yeah. people. And for those who maybe don't know, like last season was um, controversial at times. There was a lot of animosity. There was some hatred. There was some anger. So that a lot of that was triggered. So leaving the house this time, I didn't want to repeat that behavior of like avoidance and I don't want to process it and I'm fine. Don't you? Know? And the first step I took was actually watching the episodes as soon as I left. So I left on a Thursday. I got home that Sunday. I forced myself to watch the episode. And granted, my family was sitting in the living room. I was standing feet behind them in the dining room because I I just couldn't sit there and watch it but I forced myself to do it because I'm like I refuse to avoid again I refuse to like pretend I'm okay like I need to process what's happening and now that the season's wrapping up I look forward to going back and watching season 21 which I know is going to be a very emotional process but I think it'll be very therapeutic yeah, it's almost like your closure. It's like you just mm-hmm. had a breakup or something, and like now yeah. it's your closure. And I didn't think it. I, I honestly thought, all right, I lived it, done, goodbye. And like I said, going, which I think was part of my journey and going back this season, it'll hit me of like, yeah, you need to watch that and, you know, work through some of the things that you felt in that house and some of the things you experienced in that house. And, um, it's very scary to think about watching it back, but it's something that I've realized I have to do. And it's like therapy almost. Mm-hmm. Did, so are you watching this season now? Yes. Yeah, so I started watching, like I said, right when I got out of the house. Um, and I kept up with it since then, every episode, every now and again, even um, dabbling into the live feeds um, and keeping up with like the Twitter updates, <laughs> which I've never done before um, with live feeds. So I've been keeping up with it. And there's days, especially it's weird, like if I get mentioned on the live feeds by the fellow house guests, or if like my name appears in an episode, or I see myself on the memory wall in the episode, that's when I have moments of like, oh my gosh, I was in that house. <laughs> I was, that's my house. Yeah, I was just gonna ask you, like, how is that? Like watching it now, like you were just on this season, so it's like so probably weird, like seeing it go on, and like you're just not there, but like it's like I weird. Think- you're probably I'm eager people. Yeah, people. like I'm I'm eager to find I they're not Easter eggs, but I call them like the Nicole Easter eggs. So if someone's walking in the kitchen, I'm like, there's me in the background. I'm on the memory wall. Like <laughs> I I've gone back to like the fan Nicole and like loving the show Nicole and just appreciating yeah. for what it is. And like one of the things they just played was um Big Brother Comics, yep. where like every house guest gets a comic. So just seeing my comic revealed and it's you know Nicole the podmaster you know all about like you know podcasting and my hello friends podcast so that to me like I don't know I was very like fangirling like oh my gosh here I am on an episode I'm getting to watch myself on an episode so that was really I don't know I guess I expected myself to be more ew I don't want to watch this I'm not there but I'm actually the opposite I feel myself going back to like that fandom I love the game type of thing yeah, because you technically hadn't watched since season 20. Yeah, 20, yep. Yeah. When did you start watching? Was it from, like, season one, or were you, like, just coming in at a certain season? 
so I religiously started watching season 11, but I saw the ending, so literally the finale of season 10, which I think is funny because I walked in my sister's room, and I was like, oh, what are you watching? And she goes, oh, it's called Big Brother. This guy, Dan, is in the final two with this guy, Memphis, blah, blah, blah. And I think it's very interesting that the first, one of the first freaking names from Big Brother that were mentioned to me was Memphis, and that's the guy that ends up taking me out a decade later in All Stars. <laughs> so it kind of like, my life came full circle, but I started watching religiously season 11, and then I've since gone back and watched um, six parts of seven and 10. Okay. Yeah, I started actually at eight. It was really wow. fun. So I was, um, where was I? I was like locked on at home one time and I was on demand watching. And then it was like this like trailer for some, and it was them in the house or whatever, like just, and it was like, this is so interesting. It's like a big doll house. Like, and I think yep. with um, this guy, like uh, Eric and Jessica, she like had that, um, this outfit it was like a plaid outfit or something so she almost looked like a little doll so like I was so (laughs) like what this was so like I ended up watching like an episode and I'm like this is really cool like (laughs) I remember being really young and laying on the couch and seeing like this woman now that I know is evicted and she was walking out with her bag and walking down the walkway and she was greeted by this other woman who I now know is Julie Chen and (laughs) was being spoken to about being just kicked out of a house by her friends. And I was so young and I'm like, that's so mean. Why they kick their friend out of the house? Like, I'm like, and I don't know what season it was, when it was, but I remember being so young sitting on the couch and so confused and so hurt for this woman who was just kicked out of her house. (laughs) It's such a good point though. Like really it is kind of like, like you're being kicked out of your house. Yeah. And when, when, Fans will say to us, like, why do, you, why do you cry on Thursdays? Why do you all stand by the door most times and be like, bye, and you guys get emotional? And we always say, it's kind of like death. You need to understand, like, you're building the day up until Thursday. You're getting ready to get rid of one of your possibly very good friends. And then when you get rid of them, that's it. <laughs> Dr- dramatic mic drop. No, like, and then when you get rid of them, like, that's it. Like, like they walk out into the abyss and you're just in that house like, oh, well, Charlie was a good person and now I won't see him for another two months. Like, and it is, it's just the strangest feeling, especially when it is a close friend that you've spent all day, every day locked inside with and then poof, they're gone. So that's why we cry because it's like, like I said, it's like death, they're gone and you're not going to see them for months. It's, it's very, it's a very strange, like you said, dollhouse where people are just picked up and plucked away and you're still in the dollhouse thinking, where'd my friends go? Yeah. And then it's like, I could see like where, like when people, like when all their friends are gone and it's just like them and they're with people like for like Christmas. Yeah. You almost see like why it would be so hard. It's because she kind of feels like, even though they all have like relationships like in the house, like even without like maybe a game relationship, but like, I mean, you're all talking and you're still doing, but it's just weird. I agree. You're just evicted by friend. Like, and I, I know cr- you are. Yeah. Christmas um, specifically is somebody who I know has said and done, maybe not always the nicest things. Um, and she's somebody who, you know, when I was emotional on the block, she really didn't care. Um, there's been other weeks where people are crying in their bed and she's kind of like, oh, get over it. I'm going to handle it with grace. However, with that being said, I, me being an empath, I get very emotional seeing her crying in a room alone because yes, she didn't show that same compassion for other people, but that stinks. Like, like you said, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you have like relationships with people, but when you realize they're not quote unquote, your people and you're not like aligned, aligned with them, you know, you're like, oh, now, now I'm living here alone, and I'm probably going to be evicted, and that's, like, last season when Cliff left, yes, it was final three, but me, Mickey Holly, I was, at first, and, you know, the week got better as it went on, like, because we built a deeper bond, us three, but before that, I'm like, I just lost Cliff, like, how am I going to live in this house without him, and it's a very, like, you feel very exposed and alone, and, ugh, it's, it's a bad feeling. Well, especially because they were a couple, too. Yeah. Time. Like, so, if you think about it, like, you're a little got third wheel. Yeah, and that's the conversation <laughs> I had with them. I, I literally pulled them into the kitchen, 
and said, listen, it's only us three. Please like, don't ditch me all the time. I go, I get it. You guys are together. You want to go off and do your things, but please, you know, like, please still talk to me. Please don't ignore me all day, every day. And they both promised not to, and they didn't. And the three of us were inseparable that week. Um, we would rotate bedrooms and always made sure we all like slept in the same room. We would have breakfast together, lunch together, because they knew how anxious I would be. Well, that's your they, own home, basically at that point. Yeah. Like, nobody else there. Like it's the three of you. So yeah, and I would have been so anxious had they completely ditched me and I was alone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you don't have books or phone. You don't have a distraction. Yeah. So actually, I that's a good like brings a good point. Like it could be even like in the show. Let's say, how do you stay strong? Like, how do you like in those moments of like where you feel weak or you feel like you're not sure? Like, how do you stay strong during that? Oh man, in that house, I would say stay strong by talking to yourself, but in a way, talk to your loved ones. So I wasn't sure if and when they were watching, I wasn't sure if I was looking at the right camera or if the camera was even on me, but I would talk out loud, mainly kind of to myself, like a monologue, but I would be like, all right, if my sister's listening right now, this is how I feel, this is what's happening. Um, I'm okay though. I can get through this. It's just a game. And, or you go in the DR and you just rant and let, like, I'm the type of person I have to let it out. Like all my thoughts, all my feelings, all my thought processes. So I'll work through those. Um, and that keeps me strong. So I, I would say maybe it is more so like talking aloud to myself, but I feel like I'm talking to others. Cause that's oh, the weird environment of the big brother house, but outside of the house, very similar is again talking to people i'm i'm a very firm believer in like i'm not okay right now like i nicole am not okay so i nicole cannot calm myself down in certain in instances so then i will go to my sister and be like listen i'm not okay right now i'm not really sure what's bothering me but this is what i'm feeling and i'll talk it out or i'll call my co-host eric and be like listen something's freaking me out i'm not sure what it is and we'll like talk it through and I don't, I mean, I've, everything's different for other people, but for me personally, just talking yeah. it out, even, even if you don't know what it is, you literally just start talking and sometimes it comes out like, I don't know what's bothering me. You know, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about this, and work has a lot, and you go, oh, now I know what it is. It's the fact that I have a lot of work to do. And then, you know, you yeah. start to find the core of it. I do that too. Like I'm, I live with my parents still. So like I'm, and I'm very close with them. Mm -hmm. So it's like really nice, like that and they've always been so supportive of everything I do so it's like nice to talk to them like when I'm having those issues even if I don't know like I'll just cry I'll be like oh, I'm crying but <laughs> eventually we laugh about something and then it kind of eventually helps but yeah I, I love like, that um is there anything else you want to tell my listeners this can be the time you plug your podcast <laughs> uh, so okay I will begin by saying I do have um, a podcast with my co-host it's called the hello friends podcast um, we are on all the podcast providers and we also do video shows on all the major broadcasting platforms so you can see us as well as hear us um, and a lot of those shows we talk about everyday life we talk about living on Long Island we talk about reality TV we talk about mental health everything um, and with that being said I am very open with my journey um, unfortunately I, tr I try to sometimes answer people, but DMS can get a little crazy for me. So what I do instead is I try to be very open on my Instagram story and on Twitter. And like I said, the other night, I literally just tweeted out, um, it's okay to not be okay. And tonight I'm not okay, but that is okay. And the reason why I do that is just to show any and everybody who's also having a difficult time that we all go through it. Oh, okay. She's struggling right now. It's okay if I'm struggling as well. But the main point is the last sentence, which I typed, which is because I will be okay. And I promise you'll be okay. Um, be open with your journey, be open with how you're feeling. There's no, um, stigma. There shouldn't be a stigma around mental health and getting help from mental health. And I think we need to all be more vocal because it'll make it less awkward, less embarrassing to tell people how you feel. And that's, I encourage everybody to be open with one another. And if somebody is not receptive to you being open, then maybe you don't necessarily need them to be a friend in your life. I love that. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on and we're excited to see your journey and uh, listen to your 
podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. All right. Well, this was another episode of Staying Forever Strong. Bye, guys.